Over the last few decades, the battle, the confrontation between religion and the LGBT movement has often been fierce and often been very passionate. A case in point, the Mormon Church. There's been a lot of controversy over how to be gay and talk to the Mormon Church. Imagine being gay and Mormon at the same time. Welcome to our next guest, Mitch Main. How are you? Thank you, David. So, Good to be here. what's harder in San Francisco or Northern California to come out as Mormon, or I mean, former Mormon, or actually Mormon and still gay, uh, well, or vice versa? <laughs> It's a it's a it's a good question because it I, I feel like it's an equal challenge sometimes to come out as Mormon in the LGBT community as it mm -hmm. is to come out as gay inside the Mormon community. Um, there is a lot of heated passion around um, what it means to be Mormon uh, from the LGBT community, and that's completely understandable. We have, in essence, um, as a faith, branded ourselves as the religion that hates gay people, uh, starting in 2008 with our involvement um, in Proposition 8, which I think is probably. Um, uh, one of the most unchristlike things we've ever done as a religion, uh, up until last November when we enacted a policy uh, that essentially excommunicates any LGBT individual who is married or in a same-sex relationship and goes a step further and refuses to baptize any children from that union until those children turn 18 years of age and publicly disavow their parents' LGBT relationship. Well, that's a mouthful. So have you... <clears throat> So you're married or not married? I'm single. So, so you could still be a... F so you, you haven't been excommunicated yet, that's my question. Yeah, I love how you threw that in. Yeah. Um, so how, it, how, how I actually got to be where I am is I was with a partner uh, for many, many years. Uh, we split up in 2010. Um, and then 2011, there was a, there's been a great cultural move inside the church. I want to differentiate between the culture and the church itself. A cultural move inside the church to respond to LGBT people differently because most Mormons, many Mormons, 30%, 35%, don't feel like we're getting it right when it comes to LGBT individuals. So I was actually asked to serve in a post here in San Francisco in the bishopric, which is a team of leaders for a local congregation as an openly gay man. Part of the, um, the caveat on that was that I reach out to the LGBT community and help kind of build that bridge between Mormons and LGBT people. So, and I'm not being flip, you are kind of officially Mormon to the LGBT community, but you're also kind of officially LGBT to the Mormon community? I mean, is there this kind of thin blade that you dance to build dialogue between the two often uh, seemingly opposed groups, Mormonism and the LGBT community? It is, um, I think probably the, one of the most problematic things about it is being raised from the time I was born um, to believe that you can be LGBT or you can be Mormon, mm -hmm. but you cannot be both. And to that I say, complete bunk. Mm -hmm. um, no one inside the Mormon sphere gets to tell me how to be gay, but nobody inside the LGBT community can tell me how to be Mormon. Both of those things, both determining both of those sides of my identity are completely up to me mm -hmm. and up to Christ. That's mm -hmm. up to me to build that. So I think, and tell me if you think this is a fair statement or not. I mean, as someone who was raised Catholic, has a lot of friends of many faith communities, I would say that probably within the greater United States in general, but certainly within the LGBT community, there may be no more religious or faith community more misunderstood than Mormonism. Do you think that's fair? I think that's absolutely true. I and think why? You, you, will, you can expand that to the greater population as a whole. Mormonism is really misunderstood um, outside the LGBT community as well. Inside the LGBT community, I think um, we, ha we, we don't pay a lot of attention to religion for the most part. Um, I think you mean in general? We, I, exactly. Um, there is this notion, again, like I said, that we have to be either gay or Mormon, so we tend to push that aside and kind of let religion be until it pokes its nose into our business, which mm -hmm. Mormons are famous for doing. Um, and so then we learn about it, and only then do we learn um, you know, that there's also good sides to the religion and good people inside the religion, too, who want to do the right thing, despite what the institution itself is doing. Does it bother you when people make fun of Mormonism? Because they do all the time. I mean, whether it's a Broadway musical or South Park or, I mean, y y you name it. Actually, it seems to be one of the religions where it's still, I mean, l I mean let's be fair. You, you know, no one's going to stand up and say certain things about certain faith communities, but it seems to be fair game for Mormons. 
You know, my personal philosophy is if you can't laugh at yourself, everybody else is going to laugh at you. Mm -hmm. So I love a good Mormon joke. Um, I think they're, yeah, bring it on. And the Book of Mormon musical, two thumbs up from my stead, yeah. standpoint. So as a Mormon, when Mitch Romney, when Mitt Romney ran for president, was that, no, it, it was that a source of pride, but then also as a gay man, knowing what the Republican Party stood for? I mean, did, did, what was the debate going on inside your mind? Um, I'll actually speak to the larger debate that was going on inside the entire Mormon community, which was around um, good grief. Although, on the one hand, we love the fact that um, Mormonism is being pushed to the center mm -hmm. um, and pushed into the spotlight. We don't like the fact that this man is the one who's representing the religion. Um, there is a strong feeling inside Mormonism that Mitt Romney is the epitome of what is wrong with Mormonism um, in terms of being white, hetero, um, male, and really a dominant force um, throughout uh, the Mormon culture uh, that doesn't leave a lot of room for divergent voices. It doesn't leave room for women, for people of color, for LGBT mm -hmm. individuals. So there was a lot of discussion around how um, his presence sort of squashed that. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, it was really good from the standpoint that a lot of people started paying attention to what Mormonism meant, and there were some critical questions being asked. I remember um, when a, somebody that I work with in New York had gone to see the Book of Mormon musical, and she's like, you're Mormon, I just saw this great musical, talk to me about this, what's this really about this golden plate stuff? <laughs> um, so it sparked a lot of really good conversation, and I think that was a very good part of it. Right. What does being Mormon mean to you? And, you know, with, I mean, <laughs> you can't describe any religion in 13 minutes, but for someone who's not Mormon, or doesn't understand it, what is the core belief of the religion? The core belief of the religion, um, there are a couple of them that are foundational. Um, first and foremost is our emphasis on the family. Um, in my personal opinion, I think we need to expand what we define the family as being. Um, but the, it's this notion that um, these formative relationships in our lives, our moms, our dads, our siblings, our cousins, our spouses, um, and even our really, really close lifelong friends, these relationships are something that are not just temporal. Uh, when we leave this world, we are bound to those people by the love that we have for one another. And those are eternal relationships. And what that does, David, is specifically in the confines of marriage, is it gives Mormons this you know, stronghold and this ability to really try to make things work. Because if we believe that this is going to last forever, I'm going to put everything that I have into my heart to making this work. So potentially you're saying that gay Mormons should be the most faithful husbands and wives anywhere. I absolutely believe that. So I mean, yes. I mean, do you think that that's part of the attraction for you as a gay man to maintain uh, a connection and actually an espousal of the Mormon religion, that this could actually help you be a better gay man? Oh, absolutely, I think it can. Um, another part of it that is um, fundamental is this notion of personal revelation, and that's this notion that we have a direct line to God, which is very interesting if you consider that in the Mormon religion there's also a prophet who has a direct line to God. So there's this conflict then, what overwrites what? If the revelation that I get for myself on how to lead my life mm -hmm. is in direct contradiction to the prophet, who do I listen to? So we have this segment inside Mormonism of what we call follow the prophet Mormons who will always throw their own personal agency and their own revelation off the side of the boat and follow the prophet. Then we have a, a very large growing segment that's saying, wait a minute, that doesn't feel right to me. At the end of the day, it's my conscience that I have to answer to. It's my God that I have to answer to. It's not the prophet of the church, so what I feel needs to be what happens. Now, Mormonism is a growing religion. If, as I recall, I could be wrong, but I think it's one of the fastest growing religions, but not so much in the United States and other parts exactly. of the world. So you're seeing Mormonism actually drop and decline in the United States along with a lot of other religions. Uh, but you're seeing it grow in sort of our developing nations. So there's a lot of um, growth in the Philippines and China uh, in those areas, uh, but not so much hard, in the United hard, States. Hard country for any new religion, China. Very difficult country. Um, but uh, yeah, you're seeing a little bit of growth there. Uh -huh. As a gay man, when you meet someone, uh, say a boyfriend, someone you're dating, uh, how quickly does being a Mormon come up? How do you, how do you language it? And, I, and I've asked the same question of, you know, I had uh, Justice Cannon on, who's an openly gay Episcopal priest. I've had uh, members of most every faith community except Muslim on the, the show, although I keep trying, to know what is the place as an actively sexual, I'll say, gay person when you come out as a person of faith. How do you deal with that? Um, and is it pertinent? It is pertinent because I think it speaks to my values and my roots. Um, Mormonism is, it, it's interesting that you should bring up um, 
Islam, because Mormonism, like Islam, like Judaism, is very much a culture. Uh, in addition to being something uh, that we do for uh, on Sunday, it's not just a religious practice for us. It affects what we eat, what we drink, what we do with our free time. So there's a, it's embedded deeply into our identity, and I think it's fair for me to put that on the table when I'm dating. And mm -hmm. most people actually know at this point in time that I'm that, I'm that Mormon gay yeah, guy. Yeah, well, you are, you are. I mean, there, you are that kind of Mormon gay guy at the moment. Has that been difficult? Um, it's been interesting. Let's put it that way. I've actually had guys like walk away from the dating table once they've realized that I, who I am. Does that hurt um, your feelings? It, it makes me scratch my head um, because I think we as an LGBT community are the first to cry out for inclusiveness, for understanding, for listening, to be heard, and often we are the last to provide that to other people. Mm -hmm. But do you understand why someone who in the LGBT community who's not a person of faith might say, I, you know what, religion has not been very, very good to me? Absolutely, I can understand that. At the same time, what I don't understand is um, taking the time to figure out what I'm doing inside the religion, why it matters to me, and what I'm hoping to accomplish by remaining an active Mormon. We've got about two minutes left. Talk to me about why you think the Mormon Church of 2016 is different from the one that put, I didn't put it on the ballot, but spent a lot of money to make sure that marriage equality didn't, uh, didn't win. I wish that I could tell you that the institution itself was discernibly different, and I can't. What I can tell you is there are huge, deep pockets of run-of-the-mill Mormons, moms and dads who, who march in pride parades on, across the country, who vote um, at the ballot box for LGBT equality, who oppose church measures and societal and public policy measures that limit the rights of LGBT people. Um, the fact that that culture is growing inside the faith gives me great hope um, because I think it reflects the most Christ-like of Mormons to really reach out and understanding to people who you've been taught you have absolutely no nothing in, in common with. Mm -hmm. What's your relationship like with the leadership of the church? I mean, do you have some people high up in the, the Mormon church who won't publicly say, Mitch, I think what you're doing is great, keep doing it, or others who are like, can you just not be so gay? Yes. I, uh, <laughs> it's, it's a mistake. The church likes to appear very uniform. It's a mistake to think that there is at all unity on the LGBT right, right, topic right. at the very highest right. levels of the church. The one thing that I want to get to, and we, and we didn't, while well, we have a few moments left, talk to me about suicide. I know you've written, uh, written about this and how it affects you and the church and the LGBT community. Um, the policy that I mentioned earlier has really... Um, We've seen a spike in LGBT Mormon youth suicide. And in fact, the state of Utah Health Department has named suicide the number one cause of death for all youth across the state between the ages of 10 and 19 years old. A lot of those are Mormon LGBT youth. A lot of those have been kids that I know, moms and dads whose kids I know. Um, and that policy has presented a very difficult Sophie's choice for these kids. On the one hand, um, stay celibate and live this bleak life right. of loneliness when you've been taught you should be married or you lose your family for all time and eternity in the heavens? That's a very unfair and terrible question to ask yeah. a 16 year old. We're gonna have you back to talk even more about this in the next few months because it really goes to the root of how communities of faith can help the LGBT community. Absolutely. Thanks, Mitch. Thank you. Thank you for watching. We've been speaking with Mitch Main. I'm David Perry. Thanks for tuning in every week to watch 10%. Good night.